All right, so hi everyone and thank you for joining Data Con LA 2021. Welcome to the Emerging Tech Track. My name is Joanna Perdomo and I'll be your host. Uh, and our co-host is Dolapo Kester and together we'll be moderating the chat and Q&A for you during this session. Uh, and today we have our guest Vera and she's going to be talking about fraud detection and online market research. Vera has a strong background in mathematics. She teaches at UCLA Introduction to Data Science, and currently she's the Senior Director of Data Science at Shift. Previously, she worked at The Honest Company, Headspace, and FabFitFun. She developed recommendation engines, predictive LTV, survival models, adapted genetic programming, and data science for e-commerce. And overall, she's a curious and data-driven individual. I won't take up any more of her time, and I'll hand it over to Vera. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you for such a warm introduction. Uh, let me just figure out how I can share my second screen and we should be good to go. Just give me a second. Do you guys see my um, screen? We don't, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. So if you click on the Do little you see it now? icon, okay, yeah. and then you should get an option for share screen, and then you can select uh, whatever screen you want to share or window or tab. Yep. Do you guys see it now? That's what I did. I'm selecting it, clicking share. Doesn't work for some reason. Deselect. Um, so I'm able to select the screen as soon as I click on the share button, then it deselects that little computer icon again. Okay, if you want, I can share the screen for you and then. You just yeah. tell me next slide. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um. All right. Um, all right, so my name is Vera Kalinichenko. I currently work at Shift as a director of data science. When I submitted this um, conversation, this talk, I was um, working at DISCA. At DISCA, we have developed a fraud detection um, system. And uh, well, let's, um, let's just drill into that presentation. Next slide, please. All right, let's speak about the agenda of today's talk. I am really excited to be here today. And um, you can guys interrupt me uh, throughout this conversation as well as you can ask um, questions at the end of this demo as well. But um, I'm going to walk you on the overall architecture, how we detect fraudster, um, how we detect basically malicious users, as well as um, how did we start, what was our initial journey. So I'll speak a little bit uh, before we went into the machine learning approach, how we actually started with business um, driven rules and then developed the ML piece. Um, and um, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper in terms of um, outer encoders, how we leverage um, not just supervised learning, but also unsupervised learning and um, optimization that we have um, that we have done. And then also speak a little bit about what, what is coming in um, for, for the improvement of the fraud detection. Next slide, please. 
All right. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what DISCA is about. Um, so DISCA is this market research um, platform where it allows actually a data exchange between consumers and um, product providers, different brand agencies, um, different market researchers are actually want to know qualitatively and quantitatively how their product is performing. And on this platform, what you can do, you can launch all those different surveys that you're interested to find out how consumers are taking a product or maybe even doing a preliminary kind of product um, understanding and uh, requirements from the consumers. So you would launch a survey and on this single individuals like you and me can actually come in and can start filling up those surveys. So um, in that case, this case, this um, data exchange between you know, vendors, brand agencies, uh, market researcher, and um, single individual consumers who are willing to share their opinion on a variety of different products. So also those um, single individuals, we call them uh, a disk panelist uh, or users of, um, of our system. They will be monetarily rewarded when they actually go through the survey and uh, complete it. And um, always when there is some kind of a monetary value in the game, there is a potential to exploit that system. So that's why we notice that sometimes um, users would basically um, um, act badly on our system. And that's how the fraud detection came into the game. Um, so I spoke about um, survey-oriented architecture. Uh, in terms of our data storage, we, we at DISCA had a really large volume of data. Um, we were using um, you know, big data tools to slice and dice the data and exchange um, um, and actually retrieve information from that. Um, also, you know, different surveys, they were worth different points. Um, and that's usually a usual scenario in the market research survey-oriented uh, products. Uh, one thing to mention that is basically the main distinguisher between uh, DISCA and other, you know, market research firm is that we, uh, at DISCA, were data first party platform. So essentially, all the data collection was done on a user level. And if user wanted to share um, his or her data, right, then we would be able to retrieve certain data insights from it and share it um, with the branding agency, with market consumers. But um, there is there's basically the, the raw data that was available to the company, which was essential and crucial. All right. Um, Next slide, please. So this is um, a little complicated slide, I would say. So let me kind of drill into this architecture of um, fraud detection. So we started um, with panelists and um, internally, um, you know, we would actually have some kind of internal labels. We, we knew with time who were good users, who were not so good users. And um, then we decided that that kind of internal labeling was not really good enough. So we came up and um, you can actually see on this slide on the left hand side um, in blue col color coding, what was important attributes for uh, fraud detection. And um, every single you know, attribute that you can see in a rectangle um, it's a noisy attribute, and that's how usually in any fraud detection system, every single characteristic um, is usually not a strong identifier of fraud versus not fraud, but in combination, uh, very similar to the techniques developed in random forest, for example, every single classifier decision tree is not a good classifier, but if you combine all of them together, then on average, they tend to perform quite well. So um, let me just briefly kind of mention top of those um, characteristics that we leverage in our internal labeling. So the leverage payment system, 
an example of payment system would be um, uh, something like Pi, PayPal, uh, um, maybe a Venmo, maybe you know blockchain in the future. Um, just kind of to give you a few examples. Then also on the user level, we did report, um, you know, ASN, IP addresses, and that was leveraged as well. Then another interesting thing is that we did some analysis on, um, you know, basic audience segmentation, kind of what kind of people come to our site, and that was useful. So basically, uh, uh, you know, people who have kids versus people who don't have kids. And um, this is useful not just in fraud detection, but it's actually useful to understand your audience and to be able um, to do a correct match between a user and a survey, right? So let's say if, um, if I have kids, then I might be interested in back to school products, right? Or whatever is selling currently on Amazon that is kind of related to schools versus if, um, you know, I'm into sports, and maybe I would be more willing to um, uh, take surveys that are related to um, sporting um, products or sporting events and so on. So that was useful. Um, also, we leverage the user activity. So in a nutshell, that fraud detection system would score a single user, single panelist. Uh, with this um, good or bad score, right? And that good or bad score is actually um, a decimal number. So it's not a yes or no question. It's, uh, it's basically a decimal. And that indicates the propensity towards being good or towards being bad. Uh, so the user activity was essential, right? Like how quickly do you go through the survey? Are you fast or slow and, um, and so on? Uh, what kind of surveys do you take to 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 fill out? Are you more interested in a shorter type of service or in a longer type of service, and so on? Um, also, a few interesting things were that we did in you know actually email addresses, so kind of identify you know emails that are um, re contain reasonable domain versus domain that um, that don't make sense. So some kind of make up email domains um, and so on. Then let me kind of drill, um, if you don't have any questions, to the green piece and that green uh, color coding on the right hand side would resemble more what we have done in a, in machine learning perspectives. No questions, right? Okay, so we started with um, supervised learning. And uh, for supervised learning, obviously, you have to have labeled data. So we had that. Um, then we actually started to dig deeper and deeper into that supervision and the model performance. And we wanted to actually formulate the problem in more kind of Bayesian setting. So we were doing a lot of sampling. Um, and um, it's actually a very common approach to do a lot of um, sampling, specifically if your data set is not balanced. And of course, as you know, in fraud detection and anomaly detection, usually those data sets are really, really unbalanced. So we started to leverage that. Um, and then we actually developed this um, you know, grading technique. So all of those attributes on which we were kind of scoring, um, they were essentially uh, um, coefficients for our model. And then we used um, Bayesian settings to minimize, you know, on a false positive, minimize on a false negative, and actually retrieve the, the actual solution. And then I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into this um, kind of a purple rectangles if you can see so there is actually different um, machine learning algorithm that will contribute a certain values and then at the end of the day we would combine all of them together into this fraud detection vector and we will use that um questions uh, no questions at this time um you mentioned something about uh, coefficient for modeling Do you, what does that mean so um, essentially, um, um, if you have you know certain attributes on which you can make a 
noisy decision if a user is bad actor or not, then let's say you have kind of three um, maybe attributes. Maybe um, you know payment system is one attribute, and let's let's maybe be like super simple. So payment system would be one, and then the IP address would be a second one. So if you don't really know what has more value. Right, then you would actually do 50 50 split. So the coefficients between those two variables would be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right? So 0 0.5 for IP address and 0 0.5 for a payment system. But if um, there is a certain pattern in your data set, and um, you want to actually solve for those coefficients, right? Then you would put a Bayesian setting in place that you are optimizing and detecting um, you know, your true fraudulent users and also correctly identifying your good users. And that's how the coefficients will be solution of your um, optimization. Good question. Did I... Great, thank you for answering that. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, um, I think we are ready for the next slide. All right, so I'll speak a little bit about the tech stack as well. So in a tech stack, um, one of the common solutions would be, you know, Redshift database. And that's what we used uh, for reporting, also for, for our ML stuff. Um, interesting thing is that we decided to go with the AWS SageMaker as a ML solution platform. And there is many advantages for AWS SageMaker. So it allows you to retrain, to deploy a model, to launch an endpoint, and essentially monitor the performance of the model 24-7. Um, I also spoke about the business rules. So initially business rules were super valuable and then at the end we actually automated those business rules. Um, and uh, I, I guess the heart of this whole approach was the Bayesian uh, optimization technique. Um, next slide. All right, and over here you can actually see um, our, you know, our kind of progress. So initially we started with our internal statuses without this um, idea of coming up with the fuzzy attributes that will distinguish between good versus bad. So we will start initially with the uh, internal statuses and then we developed this dynamic base status uh, with equal weights and I kind of briefly spoke about that. So you have your attributes, you equally assign the weight. And then, and that's what you see in this um, first column, train on labels, right? So that's how we develop the, the, the labeling capability. And then finally, we actually develop a system that would uh, vote and that was uh, automatic voting. So it will be um, um, optimized to cover the, the pool of bad users and the pool of good users um, at the best performance. And that was actually our final solution for the um, optimal uh, Bayesian optimization. And um, the second column is uh, essentially different models that we um, used. CNN stands for convolutional neural nets. FGBoost is basically a um, boosting tree, um, random boosting tree framework, and logistic is for logistic regression. And then you also see certain metrics that we actually paid a lot of attention when we were deciding on putting the model, or uh, if you want, a bundle of models to production. AUC is basically stands for area under the curve, precision and recall. And uh, we also use the optimal threshold. Um, so it's not always 0 0.5 in the case of classifier, but can be, can be adjusted and tuned for the optimal coverage. Um, questions? All right, um, I think time. that's pretty much what I have. Sorry? I'm not at this time.
All right. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my um, UCLA email address or currently I am at Shift and you can email me there as well. Um, also, we are hiring at Shift. So if you are a data engineer or a software engineer or a data scientist or an analyst, um, feel free to contact me on, on LinkedIn or through the um, shifts email and I'll pass on your resume. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, before you leave, uh, I just had a question. I know you mentioned something about AWS SageMaker as an ML solution platform. Um, is there any other uh, cloud or like in this sense, uh, ML solutions that are out there besides AWS? Yeah, great question. Um, so there is definitely a few out there. Uh, Databricks is also a good one. Um, there is also integration between Databricks and AWS SageMaker because um, Databricks actually specializes on kind of a Spark cluster management capabilities. There is also Azure specific cloud management and AWS obviously is tied with Amazon, right? Because the, that's the parent company. Um, Google, I believe also have its own cloud solution. Um, yeah. So um, those that you mentioned, those are tech stack that you use. Um, and the this is fascinating thank you so much for making time and just sharing a uh, great insight about fraud detection um i market research is an interesting what should i say area to be in because of a lot of products are out there and people are consuming them um so what people like what people don't like uh, can you tell us in the sense the fraud detection piece of it, the essence of it in online market research. Do you know where the protection, like when you detect fraud, I don't know, it's some something that is not good. And then what is the solution? Are you protecting the product company wise or the consumer? Um, I would say it's both, right? Because um, definitely you want to um, protect your customers and disk customers were single individuals who share their opinion on products, right? And you want to ensure that uh, people who share their opinion, it's a, it's a good quality data coming from their opinion. And, you know, if there's five bad actors and one good, then obviously the opinion of a good actor is going to be subsided just by the noise coming from kind of a bad actors who wants to exploit that, right? Also for uh, brand agencies and product owners, obviously they want to hear out um, what people, consumers thinks in their product and they want to improve on their product, right? So if they're getting um, noisy information that is either, you know, bad quality or irrelevant, or um, you know doesn't even make sense then obviously it's it's not good feedback for anybody so in that nutshell you want to actually you know help out uh, both sides right you want to really help consumers because their voices needs to be heard and you want to ensure that the product takes good takes away right from from their um, questionnaires yeah fascinating um Thank you so much for answering that question. Uh, I believe most of our attendees, thank you for attending this uh, session of DataCon LA. Uh, there's a lot to take from this. And if you have further questions, you can reach out to Avera through her. Um, I think she has most of our information on the dashboard on the uh, screen that we have. And, Sometimes the profile on the calendar tells you more about Vera. Thank you so much, guys. Everyone. Of course. Thank you so much for having me here. Have a good one. Have a good day.